Hi guys, today I'll be talking about the Quran and the embryology found in the Greek texts. Now, watching the video with uh, IERA discussing embryology with Professor PZ Myers, I was appalled at the level of incompetence and that someone I had previously credited with a higher than average intelligence was using long refuted, debunked and massacred arguments and using tactics I attribute to uneducated people, such as the constant interruptions, moving the goalposts, changing topics if you see you are not immediately bowling over your opponent, and displaying huge amounts of sheer ignorance. The worst moment for me was when Hamza tried to mention isostasy, which he clearly does not understand, and even going so far as to mention a Dr. Frank Press, who is quote mined by the miracle factories of Bouquet, Nike and Yahya. After this PC Myers discussion in an Irish street, I found a lot of discussion centering on the claims that were made regarding the plagiarization, i.e. the appropriation and passing off ideas or words of another as one's own, of Greek philosophers in the Quran. In my embryology videos, I already addressed some of the points, so let me focus only on what could have been copied into the Quran from the Greek sources. There are other texts by Indians, Persians and Jews which can also be shown here but I will concentrate on the Greek ones as they suffice to show the obvious source for the vague and erroneous description of embryology in the Quran. In the Book of the Muslims we find 11 to 15 different materials out of which humans are created by Allah, the God of the Quran. There are several sentences or verses or ayat sprinkled throughout the book all dealing with or describing human reproduction. Some examples are here. And, and in fact, there were no scholars in Arabia. In his city, there, there were only 17 people who could read and write. If Muhammad was indeed illiterate and couldn't have knowledge on astronomy, meteorology, embryology, etc., how can anything vague or even something specific get into the Quran? What every historian, even historians from the University of London should be able to find out is that there was a medical school in Gundishapur, which was founded in 555 CE. In this paper written by Arif Abu Rabia, we see that the following knowledge is easily and freely available to anyone who wants to look for it. In this institution, the knowledge from Greek, Indian and Persian doctors came together and this knowledge was then transferred to others. Two of these, the few physicians Harith ibn Kalada and ibn Abi Rimta studied at this institution and were followers of Muhammad and part of the companions, the Sahaba. Nadr bin Harith, a highly educated man who spoke Persian and also studied in Persia, was a cousin of Muhammad. Quite easy to find, understand and see, one would imagine. Now in Greek medicine I will look at three people, all Greeks and from different centuries. Hippocrates, Aristotle and Galen. Hippocrates rarely mentions muscles but rather uses the term flesh. He saw the embryological development much like a tree spouting branches and twigs which are then covered by what he calls flesh. Because he thought the male genitals are formed by day 30 but the females only after 42 days, the angel in Islam has to wait 42 days to determine the gender of an embryo. Is there any similarity to the Quran? No, of course not. Aristotle, in his book on the generation of animals, says he supposes everything to come from nutriment, which carries different levels of heat, which in turn governs development. The bones, then, are made in the first conformation of the parts from the seminal secretion or residue. And a bit later, after this, as said already, the internal parts come into being before the external. In book 2 of his On the Parts of Animals, Aristotle clearly states round about the bones and then comparing it not to a tree as Hippocrates did, but to an artist when he is molding an animal out of clay or other soft substance, takes first some solid body as a basis and round this molds the clay. The creation of semen, the statement in 86.7 from between the backbone and the ribs, probably originates from his beliefs that others have testes indeed, but internally by the loin in the region of the kidneys, and from each of these a duct, as in the case of those animals that have no testes at all. Aristotle believed that the embryo essentially formed by coagulation, 
it in the, in the uterus immediately after mating, when the form-building principle of the male acted on the material substance provided by the female. He also thought that the female parent contributed only unorganized matter to the embryo. He argued that semen from the male parent provided the form or soul that guided development and that the first part of the new organism to be formed was the heart. So we see that none of the ideas and observations of Aristotle bear any resemblance to the Quran. Galen carries on the tradition of comparing reproduction of animals and humans with plants. In his On the Natural Faculties, he also propagates that hard materials form first and are subsequently surrounded by softer flesh. He then proposes an embryological development in stages. So let's compare the stages in a table to see how different the Greeks were compared to the Quran. We see that the stages are completely and utterly different and the Quran could not possibly have copied anything from the Greeks and is totally unique. What the Greeks also had in common was the belief that both man and woman contribute excretions and that the blood that women emitted during their periods had some play in this, as they often mention coagulated blood in connection with embryological development. And of course there is no mention of this in any Islamic texts. What Muslims usually claim when confronted with reality falls into three categories, semantics, moor and factual. Because the Quran on the one hand and Aristotle, Galen and Hippocrates on the other hand use different words, some Muslims claim that there is no similarity whatsoever between them. They use imply, mean, interpret, describe, confirm, refer to and many more to make the sentences in the Quran seem to match reality. They refer to the Hadith and quote mine anything they can get their hands on to make it reflect reality. Is this honest? Well, for example, the grammatical rules of the language permit singular nouns or pronouns to be described by a singular adjective. Al-Amsaj is plural adjective used with the singular noun Al-Nutfa. How does that demonstrate anything? Another linguistic masterpiece is used to explain 76.2. Verily, we created man from a mixture of germinal drop, or lo, we created man from a drop of thickened fluid which is explained as the maternal and paternal chromosomes with their genetic material and other contents of the cell, which is so obviously meant by the religious verse. It is truly amazing that nobody else will see this. So the word is thumma in Arabic, straight after. Thumma literally can in Arabic language means things happening simultaneously, yes. And immediately after that, and immediately after that, and immediately after that, things happening simultaneously, things happening simultaneously, things happening simultaneously. And as opposed to what a historian from the University of London claims, Islamic websites quote an Arabic historian and scholar. The word thum in Arabic is a conjunction indicating a time lag. Now which of these two historians should I believe? Who is right and whose opinion will lead a true believer to salvation? If none of the above suffice, words are simply redefined. A word which was in the past quite happily accepted to mean something gets a new meaning assigned to it to cater for the mistake in the Quran. Translations by Arabic speakers and scholars of the Arabic language are suddenly declared false and translations by people like Bouquet or Moor, neither of whom spoke any Arabic, are declared correct. Nutfa is suddenly a spermatozoon, an ovum and a zygote depending on whom we are talking about and at what stage. Sperm is produced anywhere between the backbone and the ribs which excludes only the knees as possible source for sperm. Even in 2011, many Muslims don't want to admit that Moore lied. They don't want to see that in all his books, he shows that mammal reproduction is initiated by fertilization, the merging of sperm, not liquid semen, and a female ovum, forming a zygote, and that bones and whatever flesh is supposed to mean, form simultaneously, not in sequence. Only in one edition of one of his books, The Developing Human, is all this deleted and replaced with Islamic editions by a Muslim, not more. 
So the millions of embryologists and the millions of books on embryology are all wrong. And a single person and a single edition of a book are what Muslims arbitrarily select as the truth. Based on what? Personal preference? Intellectual honesty? <laughs> If we look what Dr. Moore has to say about the formation of bones and flesh, Muslims should be in for a surprise. On page 346 of his fourth edition, which is just one later from the third, the Islamic edition, it says, at first the bones form as cartilage models, so that by the end of the sixth week, the whole limb skeleton is formed out of the cartilage, but without any bony calcium, as shown in figure 1513. While the bone models are forming, myoblasts develop a large muscle mass in each limb bud, separating into extensor and flexor components. Well, this must be forgery by some evil and lying atheist. What he said on the page number 364a of his book, The Human Embryo, that in the seventh week the bones are formed, and immediately after that <laughs> the flesh is formed, and the flesh, the, the bones are clothed with flesh. Well, Keith Moore is wrong. He's, He's an embryologist. Wrong. This is this is his field. There is not a single scientist who researches embryology and reproduction. Oh, by the by, Moore is not a scientist, but a celebrity author who cites the Quran or has published anything remotely resembling the contents of the Quran. Yet Muslim miracle seekers stubbornly insist that the Quran is correct and, as I was told in a discussion with some Quran teachers and a scholar, it is only a matter of time before Western scientists discover the truth and verify the Quran. But it's not, not really relevant because what they do is simply stick their fingers in their ear and say la la la. They know what's true because it's in the holy book. Muslims go to extremes to defend their old book and even create entire websites around the Islamic medicine. Probably because it is different from Norwegian or Australian medicine as Muslims are accepted from evolution and are constructed differently than other humans. The owner of medicineforfaith.net holds as his highest qualification a diploma and holds the position of associate professor of anatomy and embryology and he posits that the Quran is 100% correct. I have written to the university and I have requested some verification for this but they have not come back to me. So I'll just have to take his word for it. A highly scientific and extremely lengthy discussion is taking place here where the result on the clothing the bones with flesh is that the development events after 42 days are described in the hadith. When 42 nights have passed over the nutfa, Allah sends an angel to it, who shapes it and makes its ears, eyes, skin, flesh and bones. Then he says, O oh Lord, is it male or female? And your Lord decides what he wishes and then the angel records. So there you have the scientific facts. Their conclusion is equally hilarious because no other medical journal publishes its findings as poetry. They are not comparable to the Quranic description of embryology. Right, there you have it, and now we all know the truth. I could carry on and on, collecting bits of mindless babble, trying to adjust reality to a worldview. But I will come to my conclusion now. Anyone doubting my statements, by the way, can easily ask a question on embryology here and get answers based on reality, not religious beliefs from the 7th century. Just scroll to the bottom, provide an email address and ask away. So what we have is educated people in the immediate entourage of Muhammad contributing their contemporary knowledge. If we compare the contents and understanding, not necessarily the actual words, of the Greek doctors and philosophers, we see that they propagated for hundreds of years that humans were created from the male semen inside a female, where energy, material from the female, driven by the male excretion, leads to a development of an embryo in stages. Bones form as twigs or as the more dense material which is covered by the softer material. There are two things missing, the leech and the angel. Why are there still intelligent people out there that don't see the similarities? Now if you need a leech and an angel to help you understand embryology and make your life complete and which help you on your path to salvation, by all means go ahead and believe this. All others I welcome to the real world. Thank you for your time.